because arguing with the interviewer or not getting convinced with the interviewer is not going to bear any fruits for you hello everyone welcome back to my channel the sarthak show where we discuss about tech career product and life and aaj ka podcast bahut hi special hone wala hai because today for the first time we are bringing someone who has sat on the other side of the interview table so sanya she is working as a senior software engineer at linkedin and she will uh, unmystify what is the process of hiring someone she she is currently an interviewer and hires for software development candidates so today we will learn what is she what does she looks for in a candidate what is the typical interview process looks like how do you you how you can break uh, interview and make a mark on the interviewer so that they give you opportunity for the next round or for the position right so stay tuned till the end of this video to know more about her uh, interview pro- or like her wonder about the interview process and everything and if you are new to this channel and you have not subscribed yet to this please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon near that so that you got to get a notification every time i put a new video so without further ado let's start with the video hello everyone welcome back to my channel the sarthak show since she has been involved in hiring a lot of good candidates for linkedin we will also understand what actually interviewer are looking for a candidate or what a typical hiring process for companies like linkedin could have a successful so thank you so much sanya for joining on for this podcast i am so glad to have you here would love to know more about you and your profession back yeah thank you sarthak for having me so i'm sanya and i'm working as a senior software engineer at linkedin a little about myself that i graduated from triple it alab in the year 2017 i pursued btech in information technology from there then after my graduation like right from my college i got placed in directai as a devops engineer it wasn't a back end profile but a devops profile so i got placed there i worked there for one year as a devops engineer and then i decided to switch to a back end role then i made a switch to one of the startups in bangalore that is cubol so cubol mm-hmm. is a big data as a service platform i worked in their infrastructure team on different projects related to AWS as your GCP I was working there in Cubol for close to 2 years and then I made a switch to LinkedIn as a software engineer so currently it has been more than 2 years that I have been a part of LinkedIn at LinkedIn I work in the big data infrastructure team here in LinkedIn Bangalore so what mm-hmm. me and my team does is that we have an operational data warehouse where we have all the data related to the entire Hadoop ecosystem at LinkedIn it's present in one centralized place and then we have built an operational intelligence platform on top of that data to help the internal users at linkedin like the ai engineers the ml engineers to derive mm-hmm. insights from their data so they can derive insights on the failures resource usage and performance of their distributed data processing jobs like spark jobs and map reduce jobs so this is what me and my team do at linkedin yeah awesome to hear that you and your team has been doing phenomenal work good to know your story i do have one question how has been your experience of becoming a senior software engineer at linkedin what of the experience around that Yeah, so I was hired as a software engineer at LinkedIn to get promoted at the next level. I think that is common in any other company, but at LinkedIn we have three criteria that you mm-hmm. have to meet in order to move to the next step. So those three criteria are the leadership, craftsmanship, and execution. Like we call it LEC. So mm-hmm. you have to show good leadership skills, good craftsmanship skills, and then good mm-hmm. execution skills to move to the next level. In terms of leadership, you have to first help other team members in your team, like mentor other team members in the team. Then you have mm-hmm. to also support. the team by attracting and interviewing good talent and then you have to drive self development as well you have to communicate and collaborate with different partner teams on different projects and everything and also help junior members of the team understand the team's vision mission and strategy and help them align their work to those so that is the leadership thing and then in terms of execution it's seen how well you execute something that has been given to you how well are you delivering the projects that have been given to you is there a sense of urgency are you delivering things within the given timelines is the execution and then craftsmanship is of course how well are you doing it the solutions that you have presented the designs that you have presented are they well reasoned solutions and are you also giving enough reviews to other team members in the team so it's very important to not just focus on your work but also on the work of other members in the team like code reviews design reviews all those things are very important right. so basically it's like innovation that you have to provide and then you have to also work at scale and create and leverage through a sustained velocity 
velocity of change so basically it's three different things on which you are judged for so i have been mm-hmm. working like all the projects that have been given to me mm-hmm. right from when i joined linkedin till i moved to the next levels so you have to exhibit all these three things in every project that is given to you correct so be it something small or mid size you have to show your leadership skills execution and craftsmanship skills so once that is exhibited enough then you are ready for the next level so then mm-hmm. you are reviewed and then to the next level now the responsibilities increase more so earlier it was a c role but now it's senior c roles now the responsibility is to bring change to the team like become a subject matter expert on some technology that mm-hmm. i have been working on and then impart that knowledge to everyone in the team for example if team is working on something and if you feel that there is some different technology that the team can move to mm-hmm. that is something now you have to bring on the table and mm-hmm. at the same time you have to again continue to mentor the junior members or the new members of the team and everything mm-hmm. so earlier when i was we so i was working in collaboration with some of the senior developers but now i have been in that position so now i will be the one leading the project and maybe some junior developer will be working under me and then we'll be working on some project and delivering it within the given timelines that has been the change from spe to senior spe and journey around that congratulations to you for getting promoted exceptional journey like you mentioned like these are the skills and criteria you have been judged on it's well deserved and kudos to you for all of these achievements and more such things to come on but yeah i was like Thank about you, to ask <laughs> i was about to ask about the responsibilities only and you as you mentioned correctly these are the expected responsibilities of a senior sui right to lead the teams to lead the projects right now to work more efficiently and you are more prominent stakeholder in different projects and everything but when you become at this person there is always one added advantage that you get to hire for linkedin or you get to hire a different mm-hmm. folks for the team right? you are sitting on the different side of the table right now you are interviewing a candidate and you have to judge that this candidate is suitable for my team or my company or not based on different criteria knowledge behavior and everything so how do you go about that what kind of typical interview process does linkedin have so talking about the interview process at linkedin i'll talk about the sui vector engineer process because mm-hmm. my experience have been interviewing for software engineer role now that i have become a senior software engineer so now be interviewing for senior sui role but most of my experience is around sui role so i'll talk about that more first of all there is an initial screening round so it mm-hmm. can be a hacker rank test or it can be a telephone screening round it depends i think on the years of experience and all kind of role they are hiring for i think one one and a half years experienced candidates can really get hacker rank test hacker rank is a cloud coding platform where they ask to code i think two to three questions within the given time frame maybe one hour and once you are able to code those questions and are able to pass all the test cases then you get shortlisted so that is the hacker rank test and parallel there is also a telephone screen round which happens for a lot of candidates so in that telephone screen round first of all we ask what about the candidate and what are they working on and their experience. experience in their previous company and then there is also two to three coding questions that are asked so actually both hacker rank and telephone screening rounds are coding rounds only mm-hmm. and then once you are able to clear those rounds then you move to an on site round in on site there are five rounds at linkedin mm-hmm. two coding rounds one design round one technical communication round and then a hiring manager round okay so a little deep diving into each round as i said there are two coding rounds mm-hmm. one coding round is focused more on data structures and the other mm-hmm. is focused more on algorithms so we call them ca1 and ca2 and the levels are also the ca2 is a bit between medium to hard and ca1 is between easy to medium level these are one hour rounds and we are expected to ask at least two coding questions to the candidate mm-hmm. so we have a design round where a design problem is shared with the candidate they are expected to come up with the proper design for it a high level as well as to some extent they can go to the low level design as well then we have a technical communication round it's not a very difficult round so what happens in this round is that you are asked to explain one of your projects in your previous company so you have to deep dive into the project you have to explain different components of the project and like consider the interviewer as someone who has newly joined your company for example if i have joined your team and if you want to onboard me to some project then how well will you explain the different components that are involved how is the flow of the the service or the application that you are working on looks like because there are cross questionings on different technologies used in your handling and all those things because in the end we have a hiring manager round in which there are typical hiring manager questions but along with that there's also a small design problem that is given you're mm-hmm. not expected to build the entire design around that problem but yeah the hiring manager is mostly looking how well you can think about the problem how well you can come up with ideas or solutions to solve that problem each round is of one hour this is the five on site rounds interesting so out of these five rounds are they generally in a single day or are they based on elimination or this is like more like a step by step process and you will have a cumulative result how these work since it has been virtual mm-hmm. it's not based on elimination for example if i take an interview so it will 
will take me some time to fill the feedback if your five on site rounds are scheduled you will have to give all the five rounds it's not like if one round goes bad so you will not be asked to give other rounds you are basically given a fair chance to perform well in all the rounds even if one round goes bad and if you are able to do well in all the other four rounds still mm-hmm. you have a fair chance to get hired so there isn't any cut anywhere all the five rounds will happen and as mm-hmm. you mentioned whether they are in a single day or not so that totally left on the candidate and mm-hmm. based on their availability i have seen a lot of candidates that have all five rounds in a single day and there are some who have like three rounds on one day and two rounds the other day so mm-hmm. it all depends on the candidate oh, okay makes sense but yeah that's great to know that these are not elimination rounds so even if no. there is some minor mistake in one of those rounds you still yes. have chances to make up for in the next round of course yes. yeah but very interesting approach out there because these five round is like an exhaustive process and it takes care of understanding the candidate at a very good depth because something like a technical communication is also part of the person that they yes. are hiring if they are not able to explain the technical jargons or whatever the team is doing or maybe in the design round how they are designing some solution because at the mm. scale which linkedin is working with billions of consumers i think it makes more sense to design an optimized solution or how to design scalable uh, solutions or product around it so yeah i think that's great yeah i think as you mentioned scalability is something which is very important while uh, designing something so and that is one of the major things Things that we judge on. If you throw a problem at someone, so they may not think about the scale right in the beginning. So we generally mm-hmm. ask the candidate to build it for a small scale, like for example, hundred users or something. And then mm-hmm. once they have that design in place, then we ask them to now think about billion users, like millions of users. Will that right. will be using your service? So now try to bring in scalability in this. That mm-hmm. way, we generally ask the candidate because if you just intimate them by just asking them to build it for millions of users, they might just get lost and the design will be everywhere. Correct, correct. I think that makes. Sense because it's more like a baby steps. Then I'm yes. sure that LinkedIn has been the one of the best company to interview with because they have finest interviewers. They are always ready to help you in the way, and they're like very calm. And what at least I have heard is like people have their best interview experiences over there. And as you rightly mentioned, that you judge people on a lot of different things, and one of the things is scalability, how they design for scale. But what are those other factors that you look for in a candidate in these different rounds? So let's say starting with the CA one, CA two. What are the different things that you look for in a candidate? How things are progressed? What is the interviewer mindset at that moment of the time? To start with the coding round, we generally look for the problem solving skills. Mm-hmm. It's not that you should give the correct solution all at once. For example, if we ask a coding question, you can just start with some group for solution. You can tell what comes to your mind first, and mm-hmm. this is something that will work. But of course, the time complexity will be high. So the candidate is free to explore the solution that okay, this can work, but I think the time complexity will be very high. So let's think of something which is more optimal. It's like a very interactive round where it's not just that we. Ask the question and we sit silently. Continuously interact with the candidate. We ask them their thought process and if there is something that they want to discuss, any clarifying questions that they have. Even if their approach is not correct, we try to direct them to the correct approach. So we do drop a lot of hints. But then, if there is some candidate who is not even able to pick the hints, then that is a red flag, right? Because mm-hmm. if you are able to pick up hints, that means okay, you got stuck. But if someone is hinting you, so you were able to move to the right track. A lot of things like these are judged that how many hints were dropped, whether the candidate. it was able to get the hints or not for example if the we ask the question and then the time limit for that question is like 20 25 minutes i believe it should be solved in 20 25 minutes and if the candidate is taking a lot of time like complete one hour to solve that question then that is also a red flag because th- that's not expected so right. timing is also one thing that we look out for mm-hmm. and how well are you able to communicate what you are thinking specifically in coding round have you covered the edge cases or not because sometimes mm-hmm. people are able to code the solution but they miss on the edge cases understanding the time complexity of the solution that you have given is very important if you have given a solution that is not optimal you should know that this is not optimal you should know that this what's the time complexity of that solution just to summarize it like the problem solving skills how well are you able to communicate your thought to the interviewer how well are you able to manage the time within that interview and then covering right. all the edge cases and of course in the end just dry running it with the interviewer and making sure that it has passed all the test cases and making the session very interactive these are things that we look out for in a candidate comes to the code rounds if i talk about the design rounds as i told you earlier also that we start by discussing functional requirements so we look out for the candidate to tell us the functional requirements for the design the non functional requirements like these are the things that should come up by themselves without right. us telling anything and mm-hmm. then of course building it for a small scale how well are their choice of technologies that they are using suppose if they are using key value store why they are using it if they are making sure that availability is there consistency is there it is fault mm-hmm. tolerance so what is the thing that will be compromised no system can have everything so what are the important things that your system should have and what is something that 
can be compromised mm-hmm. like you know all these things and are you able to think about the scale and if are you able to think about failure scenarios design mm-hmm. if something fails then how will you recover your system from the failure then mm-hmm. moving on to the technical communication round so uh, that is where we judge how well you understand your work because you are claiming that you have worked on these these projects mm-hmm. and then you are asked to deep dive on any one project of your choice like if we are not giving anything that you have to explain this particular thing it's Correct. completely your choice that you have to explain one of your favorite projects we look out for in a candidate that how well are they able to deep dive into each component that they have worked on and then we also judge whether the candidate has worked on it independently or whether in collaboration with someone because we mm-hmm. are interested in the piece that the candidate has worked on not Correct. something which they have worked on in collaboration and then they are calling it theirs there are some cross questions thrown around failure handling or the choice of technology they should be able to answer because it's their work they know it right. better so they should be able to answer us if we have doubts on anything mm-hmm. so yeah these are the four rounds that i have taken of course i've not taken the hiring manager round so so these are the things that we look out for in a candidate My just thing. to summarize it if there are engineering students listening to this podcast and if they are working professionals even if with one or two year experience so they can apply for sweet roles at linkedin do remember that the coding skills the problem solving skills is one of the most important thing that you will be judged for yeah awesome i think it has been summarized very well and laid out all the information in very very crisp manner that what exactly interviewer is looking for in each of these rounds so folks with this we come to the end of part 1 uh, of this podcast i hope aapko interview process ke mein kuch idea laga hoga what is she up to what are her com- uh, team works upon and in the next round what are, we will discuss about uh, the red flags uh, that that can a candidate can show and could be uh, uh, could act as a as a negative point uh, during the interview so stay tuned for that uh, that video is going to drop tomorrow and till then take care see you in the next video bye bye